7.6, the cross product. So this lesson is going to show you a much easier way to find a normal vector. So this is a normal vector to two vectors that are in R3. It only works in R3. So another interesting calculation here is that if we find the magnitude of the cross product, we actually find the area of the parallelogram formed with the two vectors. So if you look at this little diagram here, if I had vector A and vector B, and this height of my parallelogram, of course, would be B sine theta. And that happens to be the magnitude of the cross product will give me this A, B sine theta. Note the difference between that and the dot product, which uses the cos. So the other thing that you have to know is whether or not your normal vector is coming out of the paper or if it's going down. So the important thing here is, is A cross B coming up or is it going down? So in using the right hand rule, which I find a little bit confusing because I always find my hands get all mixed up. But if you put sort of your wrist at the vertex here and you try to curl your hand from A to B, you can see that my thumb would be going up. Whereas if I was trying to go from B to A and I still have to use my right hand, my thumb would have to go down for me to go from B to A. Another way of looking at it, and I think it's much easier, at least for me, is if you have, you know, A and B like this, and I said A cross, crossed with B means I'm going from A to B. Now, if I go this way, I'm going to counterclockwise, right, counterclockwise, um, or turning left. You know, like when you're trying to screw a lid on a jar, if you turn it to the right, you tighten it. If you turn it to the left, you're loosening it. So if I'm going this way, I'm going to the left, just looking at it from above. So that means I'm loosening it. So righty, you might have heard this saying before, if you're trying to remember which way to open a jar, you might say righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. Anybody know that? If you don't, you know it now. So if I'm tightening something, so I was going B on A, I would be turning it this way from B to A. And if I'm tightening a screw that's right here, then it's going to go into the page. So it's going to go down. Whereas if I'm turning A on B, I'm turning to the left. So I'm loosening and the screw is going to go, go up. So that to me makes a little more sense. I always found this right hand rule um, and I've had students like twisting their hands upside down trying to figure it out. But this seems to work quite well. Just think of it as a screw. If you're tightening it, you're moving to the right. So that would be B on A. So righty tighty would be B cross A. And lefty loosey would be A crossed with B, which means if I'm tightening something, it's going into the page and sometimes it'll show it like this and if it's coming out of the page it would be like this so it's supposed to be arrows like this is the the back end of a feathered arrow and this is the tip of it coming up okay so a cross b here would be coming up and otherwise it would be going down okay so let's go back to a little example here so if i asked you if i gave you this information here about C and D, and you're trying to do C crossed D, the magnitude of it, so we're finding the area of the parallelogram, we would say the magnitude of C, well, it's already given here, it's a pretty simple question, it gives you four, and the magnitude of D is six, all times the sine of 17 degrees, and that comes out to approximately seven. Now, you have to say up or down is your pair, is your is your arrow coming up here? Is your normal coming up out of the plane or is it going down? So if I did C on D, I would be turning this way, which would be clockwise or tightening. So that means the screw's going down or into the page. Depends on what your teacher likes to say. Or maybe you had to draw a little diagram like this. Okay, so a few little notes. Note that a, vectors a and b are vectors in R3. We already said that. 
They are arranged tail to tail and the angle theta between them is between 0 and 180 degrees. So we don't have any, any um, angles greater than 180. And the cross product is a vector perpendicular to both A and B. So you can see if I had something it would be coming up or it's going down. Now don't forget the most important thing here is that it is a vector as opposed to the dot product that was a scalar. Okay, so now let's take a look at the cross product formula and I'm going to show you a very easy way to find a cross product. So here is the actual formula. It says if A vector A is A1, A2, A3 and B1, B2, B3, the cross product is A2, B3 minus A2, A, B2, A3. I'm not even going to read that because that's just really confusing. And your textbook doesn't show you this really easy way. It kind of alludes to it a bit, but I'm going to show you how to do it very easily. So the first thing you want to do is to write the two vectors out twice, one above each other. So I'm going to write minus 2, 4, 1, minus 2, 4, 1. And right under it, I'm going to write 3, 2, 5, 3, 2, 5. Okay, so once you've written those out, what you're going to do is you're going to just get rid of the first two and the last two numbers. And then we're going to make crosses. Look at that, a eh? cross product. So I'm going to do an arrow down and an arrow up. Now, all I have to do to find a cross B and you'll see that this is exactly what that formula says above, is I'm going to say, okay, I have four times five. So this is like A2 here, right? My second position was A2 times B3. And then I subtract, this was my B2 and my A3. So I don't have to memorize this long, crazy formula. So I would say four times five. So I'm gonna do four times five, and I'm going to subtract. 2 times 1. The only thing you have to be careful with here is signs. And then I'm going to do 1 times 3. So 1 times 3. And I'm going to subtract from that 5 times minus 2. Okay, so be really careful with the minus. Obviously, this is going to be an addition here. And then I'm going to do minus 2 times 2. And each one of these little calculations is going to give me one of the values in my triplet. So I have minus 2 times 2 minus 3 times 4. And now all you have to do is the baby math here. So I have 20 minus 2 gives me 18. And I have 3 plus 10 which is 13. And I have minus 4 minus 12 is minus 16. So that's A cross B. That's not the magnitude. This is the vector product. Sometimes you hear them calling vector products or cross product. So if I wanted to know what B cross A was, it would be the negative of this. So it would be minus 18, minus 13, and 16. Okay, so that's how easy it is. Just this, again, write them out twice. Get rid of the last ones. Multiply down, subtract up. Multiply down, subtract up. Multiply down, subtract up. Say it to yourself a few times as you're doing it and you'll be certain to learn this very quickly. Now, how do you know if you got the right answer? There is a very easy way. So you can check your answer quickly by taking the dot product of this normal with either of the original vectors. So I could say um, minus 18 minus, well, we'll do the negative ones, minus 13, 16. We're not afraid of negative numbers, are we? And we're going to dot that with um, minus 2, 4, 1. Now, it doesn't matter if I had chosen that one or this one. So if I do the dot product, so I have minus 18 times minus 2, that's 36. Minus 13 times 4 is minus uh, 52. And 16 times 1 is 16 plus 16. And that's 52 minus 52 gives me 0. Okay, so if your dot product is 0, that means that the two vectors are perpendicular. 
Okay, so that means you did find the normal vector. Perpendicular. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so work with this. Okay, get this settled and figured out. It's not a hard lesson. Multiply, subtract, multiply, subtract. Just get rid of those two. Bang. There's your little part you're working with. And like I said, you could go back and see how this is actually, if your teacher wanted you to memorize this, you don't even need to memorize it because then you could, you could figure this out that you're doing A2 times B3 and you're subtracting B2 times A3, right? You don't need to memorize that. Okay, so finally, the properties, we've already talked about this one, the anti-commutative property, something you've never seen before, that when you multiply two things together, the cross product here, in this case, is the negative of the other one. And A crossed with B plus C is A cross B plus A cross C. That's nice. The distributive law applies. And that if you have a cross product of the very same vector, or we already said it could be um, a scalar multiple, which means it would be two collinear vectors, you're always going to get zero. Okay, so I hope that helps you with your cross product lessons and um, we'll do the next lesson will be in applications of the cross product next.